it says in James that there are certain things that we've not received because we've not asked. Uh, turn with me to James ch chapter, chapter 4, verse 3, James 4, 3. You ask and do not receive because you ask with wrong motives that you may spend it on your own pleasures. There's things that we ask. So, uh, like we heard this morning, why isn't everybody experiencing it? Why haven't the eyes been opened? And for me, the thing that, Lord, have I not asked like Paul did for my brothers and sisters? Lord, open their eyes. Open my eyes, Lord. If, if there is blindness in our midst, Lord, is it because I've not asked in faith, Lord? Lord, you will receive. Anything that we ask, we can ask in confidence that the Lord will do. And if there's a lacking in our midst, Lord, I pray, Lord, that I'll do my part, Lord, in praying in faith, Lord. It says in 1 John, and this verse has been an encouragement me, for, to me recently. 1 John chapter 3, verse 21. Beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence before God. And whatever we ask, we receive from him. Lord, I ask, Lord, that even today, Lord, the word we heard, Lord, according to that verse, even if the eyes haven't been opened till now, we heard it, we understood it in our minds, but it hasn't became revelation in our hearts where it's changing our lives. Lord, let it happen today, Lord. And I believe, Lord, I have a clear conscience. I have confidence, Lord. My heart doesn't condemn me, Lord. I can ask for each and every one, Lord, that their eyes would be open, just like Paul did. He, he prayed to the Ephesian church, not guessing whether God would answer his prayer or not. He had complete confidence that if he prayed for the believers in Ephesus, that he loved dearly, that God would indeed, through his Holy Spirit, reveal and open their eyes. We sometimes pray for those who are unbelievers and say, Lord, open their hearts. It says in Acts, um, it says, open their eyes that they may see and be taken from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of your dear son. Um, and we pray that for those whose eyes haven't been opened. It's here, Acts 26, verse 18. Acts 26, 18. To open their eyes that they may turn from darkness to light and from the dominion of Satan to God, that they may receive the forgiveness of sins and inheritance among those who have been sanctified by faith in me. We pray that for those who are not saved, that they don't know the Lord. We want them to be from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of his dear son. But what about those who have been come, they've come from the kingdom of darkness and they're here and they're bound by sin like we heard this morning. There's areas of where they're constantly defeated we read in uh, 1 Samuel where Goliath comes every morning for 40 days and he taunts them. And today you might be in that place where the Goliath has come and taunting you. You're never going to be free from this. Turn with me to 1 Samuel. and We can read the taunt that the enemy had constantly put. Actually, 1 Samuel... It says in uh, 1 Samuel, what, what, which one? 17. And it says that he came, oh yes, here, verse 16. The Philistine came forward morning and evening for 40 days and took his stand. Morning and evening, coming and saying, who will you send to come? Are you ever going to be taken you're going to be bound by me. One day I'm going to defeat you and all of you are going to be my servants. That's what he says. But there came one person who had faith. The Lord who delivered me from the bear and the lion is going to deliver me. And I believe the Lord, it says, without faith, it's impossible to please God. And that day when the Lord was looking down, he says, oh, 
there's a bunch of Israelites all standing there, and all of them are fearful. And David had every reason to be fearful, just like all of the other ones. But he's having faith that he's going to go and defeat this giant, which is so many times bigger. But the Lord said, you know what? Faith pleases me. And this morning also, when we heard, I believe that there's, there's many, because I've seen it in my life. There was a time when I went skiing many years ago. And as I was going down the slope, I fell down. And every time I tried to get up, I'd slip back again. And this happened for a very long period of time. I don't know how long. And one of the skis was up in the slope and the other one was on my foot. So every time I got up, I fell down, I fell down. And it came to a place where I started crying and I say, Lord, I don't want to even stand up because the only thing I have is to fall down again. And that could be the way we are with sin. There could be certain sins, certain sins of fear and anxiety and bondage to lust that we feel like that same way. Lord, what's the point of getting up, Lord? I'm just going to fall again, Lord. And for that, the Lord is saying in faith, like David said, he had the same circumstances as every other Israelite. There was a big giant standing there who's taunting them. But he said, you know what? I'm not going to look through the eyes of faith. I'm going to have faith in my God who's going to give me the victory. And for each one of us, especially those of us who've seen defeat over and over again, God also was delighted when he saw two men, Joshua and Caleb, said, you know what? There's giants like all the other Israelites see. 600,000 men see these Israelites. Same circumstances, but two of them looked in faith, saying, I have a God. And even this morning, I know it's, it's Mother's Day, and I was thinking about that. That, that. that passage where it says, you being evil, fathers, you being evil, mothers, we being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much a ch mother loves a child. And we were hearing about faith. We were hearing about faith, about who God is. And I believe that many of us, including myself, have struggled with this. How is God? Does God look at me with a joy or is he having a frown on, on me this morning? How does he look at me? And then I have to look at the mothers and the fathers and look at how they love their children. And then I have to say, you know what, Lord? I am not anywhere close to who you are as a father. And if I see a mother loving that child, day in and day out. And that child doesn't have to do anything. A two-month-old child doesn't have to do anything in return back to that mother and constantly love after love after love. Middle of the night wakes up. No sacrifice is too great for a mother to make for the child. Constantly woken up and disturbed and just everything but out of love. And if a mother can do that for a child constantly, that's the faith I want to receive this morning, the faith that we heard of who this God, as we heard in Hosea. They don't know me from the least to the greatest, from the youngest to the oldest. They don't know me. And so they're insecure, and, they're, and I've been insecure also in my life. But I, today, I want my open, the eyes of my heart to be open to see my Father and remind it constantly. Peter says, in, he says in his letter, he says, it do, I don't, it's not burdensome for me to repeat what I keep saying to you. I know you're established and I know that you know it, but I'm going to remind you again. And even this morning, as I, as I think about these mothers and fathers, that's what I was thinking, Lord. If a mother can love with that intensity, how much more do you love me and you with that intensity? constantly thinking about me, constantly loving me, constantly interceding for me. And you could go away and say, you know what, I don't believe that. Or you can say, you know what, Lord, maybe I haven't believed this for all these days, but today it's going to be different, Lord. You're going to open up my eyes, Lord, in faith that I'm going to see you as a loving father who cares for me intensely. Like a mother constantly thinks about her child, you constantly think about me. That's what changed that boy, the prodigal son. He was out there. 
The thing he had forgotten is that his father loved him dearly. That's what he remembered when he was out there. He remembered, hey, I'm here in bondage here. I'm a servant here. I'm feeding pigs. I'm eating the pig. I long for these pig's food. But nobody's giving me even this pig's food. And then he remembered that he had a father. And then he went back home and then had that feast. And he's like, now I remember my father and how much he loves me. Today I remember my God, my father in heaven who loves me dearly. I feasted on his table. And if you go and ask that boy and say, do you love, would you, after eating at this father's table, would you want to go and eat the pig's food? You know the answer. He'll say, no, why would I go there and eat the pig's food? And that's what we heard this morning. The servant stays outside the house, but the son, when he comes back home, he eats the fatted calf and all of that, sees the lavish love that the father is bestowing on him. He'll never want to go into be bondage and be a hired servant of another nation. He'll say, no, I want to stay in the father's heaven. And so for each one of us, that's the reminder I'm receiving today. I want to go in from the least to the greatest. I want the word to be written in my heart as it says in, in 2 Corinthians 3. He doesn't write in tablets of stone. He writes in our hearts, I love you, son. I love you, daughter. I want him to write that this morning for each one of us. May we, may we go home today, be with our father um, in his home. Amen. Thank you, brothers. I have been thinking on faith recently as well um, about having access to our Lord Jesus Christ. Um, in Ephesians 3 and 12, I was thinking in relation to um, my access to the Lord and my faith in receiving from the Lord and also just receiving him, seeing him for who he is, as we've been hearing about today. But in Ephesians uh, 3, actually 3, 11 and 12, it says, this was in accordance with the eternal purpose which he carried out in Christ Jesus our Lord in whom we have boldness and confident access through faith in him. And I was thinking about how faith, a lot of times I used to look at faith and have faith as the world used to have faith. And what it was was just blind optimism or just wishing on a star or just believing something and it's not even something that is backed by anything um, and even when I read to God's word, it was almost as if I just threw my request out there. And it was almost as if it was just blind optimism. He may or may not. He, he may have mercy on me. He may, ha he may uh, not. But when I continue to listen to it and, and go to God, it said, in whom we have boldness and confidence. That's the difference between the faith that the world has, uh, that it may or may not happen. But for us. That faith, when God speaks to our hearts, something that God has clearly spoken in his word and that we have faith to believe that it produces in us a boldness and a confidence, um, knowing that we have access to God, our father. And the Lord spoke something to me um, last night because that has been the cry of my heart recently about just seeing the Lord Jesus as we heard as we were seeing. As we were singing earlier, once it was the blessing, now it is the Lord. That it goes past all of what we um, are asking the Lord for or uh, even beyond just maybe asking and receiving. Uh, but that confidence of knowing Jesus is who he says he is and that he will reveal himself to us. Uh, in John 11 and 40. Because I've been really seeking the Lord and wanting to see him 
uh, himself, as A.B. Simpson, uh, that what he wrote about himself, that so many things were happening in his life, that he was seeking for this, seeking for that. Um, but once he starts seeking the Lord Jesus himself, uh, in John 11 and 40, uh, Jesus said to her, and it was as if Jesus was saying this to me, did not I say to you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? Uh, and it's almost as if it was a, ch a, a chiding uh, in a way. Because that was one of the things that the Lord marveled at in, in different places that marvel at our unbelief. Um, and he, she said to him, Jesus said to her and saying to me, did not I say to you that if you believe, if you have faith to believe, you will see the glory of God. Um, and as I was sitting there thinking that it's not the devil that's keeping me from seeing the glory of God. It's not my enemy. It's not anybody that are, that is doing my my enemy that is persecuting me, or my tribulations, or the circumstances I'm going through. That if I get to the end of my life and I did not see the glory of God, it was because of my unbelief. Um, and Hebrews talks about there's a rest that remaineth for the people of God, uh, but they did not enter, and I will not enter if I don't believe. Um, and as we as we heard yesterday about blind Bartimaeus. Um, in Mark 10, uh, it was by faith that Jesus asked him, uh, in 10 and, um, in 49, and Jesus stopped and said, and said, called him here so they called the blind man he was blind and he was a beggar um, and they called the blind man saying to him take courage stand up he is calling for you throwing aside his cloak he jumped up and came to Jesus and answering him Jesus said what do you want me to do for you and the blind man said to him Rabboni or teacher I want to regain my sight uh, I want freedom from sin. I want what we were hearing today. I want to see Jesus. I want to see the glory of the Lord. I want to see the image of Jesus Christ. And Jesus said to him, go, your faith has made you well. And immediately he regained his sight and began following him on the road. And the last verse I want to say is something that when I have trouble believing which I admit sometimes you can hear something in scripture or you can see hear something over and over even hear the 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 message of victory over sin um, so many times we hear about uh, living a godly life being conformed to the image of Jesus Christ Sunday after Sunday and sometimes you you may not see those may not see those things in your life, and then your faith began to waver. Um, but this is something that I read that that I go to the scripture in Romans fifteen and thirteen that I read because there's faith in coming to the Lord for faith. And there's a fundamental faith that I can that I have that I that I will not or should not allow the enemy to shake. Um, and with that, from that faith, I go to the Lord for faith, which is, which is a, like a paradox, but this is what I go to the Lord when I have trouble believing something or something that is not true in my life. It said, now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace and believing so that you will abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. And... And even if you don't have faith to believe, the Lord can write that faith on your heart that the God of hope will fill you with joy and peace in believing. Even if you had got weary of believing, God of hope can give you peace and joy. He can restore that joy in believing uh, Jesus Christ and that you will abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit.